A fresh approach to online learning. You're looking at an online course that does not focus on the learning management system as its starting point. This is a full-fledged university course designed from the ground up to be conducted online without a complex computer system to orchestrate learning actions. I have found that this is a simpler yet more effective way for learners to learn and teachers to teach. Why? Because this puts less extraneous cognitive load between the learner and the material and between the instructor and students. Quite simply, this causes less frustration and less wasted time. Everything you need for this course is right here in this inexpensive printed workbook. All of the learning materials for this course are immediately accessible to you via smart cell phone, iPod, iPad, tablet computer, or traditional laptop or desktop. This course is built on a traditional text, The Story of Art by Ernst Valbridge, plus multimedia, concise lecture videos I have created, supplementary videos, online exercises with immediate feedback, and editable turnaround documents with worksheets to help you study. Online learning certainly uses the Internet and its wonderful resources, but as this workbook demonstrates, this can be done, and done better, without the need for a complex computer system to orchestrate access to web learning resources. Without a core online system, extraneous complexity is minimal, and nothing stands in the way of learners actually focusing on the subject matter instead of grappling with a system. How does this course provide superior online access without a learning management system? You'll see this unfold as you read the next few pages, and this method provides the same advantages to faculty as well as students. For learners, styles of instruction and learning need to take into account the nature of the knowledge on which a course centers. Most of the learners in this type of course do not yet know much about the events, technologies, and people who shaped art and the technologies that support it. There's much to learn. The instructor is your guide. You will learn from reading, seeing, hearing, and doing. I will give you extensive individual feedback on your doing, and you will have a chance to revise your work based on my feedback. You can then resubmit your work. I am your mentor. You are my apprentice. You will learn from these resources, not from your fellow students. At this point, they most likely don't know any more than you do, and you're both on a journey of discovery. This is not a new pedagogy. It's what existed before the rise of monasteries in Europe in the Middle Ages. Prior to that time, learning was accomplished between someone who possessed knowledge and someone who did not yet possess that knowledge. Learning occurred with the teacher instructing individuals or very small groups. The monastery invented the classroom when more people needed to be taught than could be accommodated with the ancient technique, and when few people could read and books were scarce. The classroom was a compromise that became institutionalized, but for many kinds of knowledge learning, the classroom is a poor vehicle. The modern use of today's technology recognizes this. The true power of modern technology is to return to more individualized teaching and learning. This point is missed by many technologists and by the purveyors of systems whose careers are focused on obsolescent concepts, who try to make the computer screen into a classroom. That approach complicates. The new approach simplifies. The new approach does not attempt to enshrine the classroom in electronic form. It deconstructs the classroom. This course and this workbook are a small facet of what is now being called frugal innovation in the literature. This term is to some extent based on the old 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the benefit comes from 20% of the product. Applied to manufacturing, frugal innovation strips a product of the bells, whistles, and frills and produces a more reliable, easier to use, and less expensive product. Frugal innovation applied to higher education means more than it does for manufacturing. The frugal approach evident in this workbook does not strip out excess functionality. Here I discard unnecessary technical distraction where it is no longer needed to fulfill the goal. The now ubiquitous smart cell phones and tablet computers, iPads and iPods, freely generated quick response codes, and a simple flexible web URL redirector all converge to make it possible to couple inexpensive printed learning materials with state-of-the-art multimedia. That's the experience upon which you are about to embark with this course and workbook. You see, this workbook is the course. The course does not use a learning management system because it is no longer necessary as a middleman. For instructors, 
The approach you see demonstrated in this course and workbook solves numerous problems that have traditionally impeded the adoption of online learning by faculty in the liberal arts. These problems, among others, include the time needed to learn how to use a given learning management system, the constraints imposed by these systems on the presentation of content, the burden an LMS imposes on course setup, and the distraction to learning posed by training students to use these systems. The greatest impediment, however, resides in the quite reasonable reticence of faculty to pour their intellectual property into systems owned and operated by others, with the prospect of losing control or even ownership of the work. As this workbook demonstrates, the published workbook approach now allows direct access to multimedia with the most modern devices and requires no new tools. You use whatever word processor you wish. New techniques for the assembly of a workbook speed the process while avoiding involvement in the distribution process. The author retains full copyright because this is traditional publishing. He or she receives customary attribution and royalties. This is a win-win-win situation. Students, faculty, and university administration all gain, and it provides the incentive for educational material development by faculty and their rightful sharing in the benefits of their labors and intellectual property.